It's a simple fact that rotten or damaged cotton bowls produce no cotton. Monitor's Rick Trepto reports the University of Georgia cotton team has been busy this summer working with growers to quickly treat heavy insect and disease pressure across the state's cotton belt. Here's his report. You can go with a pyrethroid at six ounces, uh, but if you got you know real high numbers and a lot of larges, you're gonna need to put nine ounces. And that's Dr. Philip Roberts giving a prescription for treating fall armyworms to a cotton grower on a near 100 degree day with humidity suitable only for cotton. We caught up with the state's cotton team leader. He said if fields weren't scouted well, yields will drop. This has been a much more active year to date. Uh, we've seen a lot more activity with corn earworms and army worms, like fall army worms. Uh, and again, we still have stink bugs that need to be scouted and treated. If we compare this year to the previous few, uh, to date, uh, we've had to use insecticides on a, on a much larger percentage of our crop to date. Just a short walk around the on-farm research plots at the UGA Tifton campus showed perfect examples of insect pressure. We know it's damaged from stink bugs because number one, there wasn't a uh, area of the bowl where a caterpillar had chewed into it. Um, I mean, it looked perfectly normal on the outside, but it was rotten on the inside. Dr. Roberts showed us only the worst looking examples he could find. In a typical large field, there would be hot spots. We tend to see uh, higher stink bug numbers on the edges of fields, particularly near peanut plantings. In addition to the fall army worm damage, the researchers say Growers should be looking for spider mites. They show up on the back of the leaves. They're very tiny critters that feed on the underside of the leaf, and you actually need a magnifying glass to, to uh, uh, see and confirm that spider mites are infesting the leaf. But we see symptomatic signs on the upper surface of the leaf, the yellowing, uh, the bronzing. It's not like the tomato-spotted wilt virus or palmer amaranth, pigweed, that can't be treated. Most producers are still using the Delta Pineland 555 single gene cotton variety. And it has forced our growers to uh, make additional inputs in terms of insecticide, but uh, in the majority of situations, uh, we are obtaining you know, good control. Many of our growers have opted to uh, take a look at some of the two gene BT cottons, such as the wide strike technology found in phytogen varieties or the Bolgard 2 found in Delta Pine and uh, uh, stone wool and fiber max varieties. They're actually providing a much higher level of control of both corn earworm and fall armyworm compared with Bolgard. And actually, if you look at the difference in growth, that's three days worth of growth. So in theory, this bowl is three days younger than that bowl. So your older fruit's always on the bottom and your younger fruit is on the top of the plant. Hired scouts or the farmers themselves getting out of the truck and searching is still important, according to Philip Roberts. The third to fifth week of bloom is when the most intensive scouting and chemical treatment, if necessary, should be done. So the 2009 cotton crop isn't finished yet. I'm Rick Trepto for the Georgia Farm Monitor.